be coming here. As a reminder, I'm a senior at Carnegie Mellon University. Oh my gosh, you're a senior. Can I please ask you some questions? I'm a freshman and I'm just kind of nervous. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. myself up to do well in my CS classes. I've never really had this type of lecture style before. I don't really know what things are going to look like, so do you have any advice for that? So the biggest thing that I think defines whether a person will have a hard or easy time doing well in this major is how much procrastination that they end up doing. Basically, if a person is able to actually schedule out everything and divvy out all of the work that they have to do within the week and meet deadlines and stuff gets a lot easier. Part of that is making sure that you have a work schedule, which kind of sounds like cliche, yeah. Whatever work schedule, yada yada. But no really, have some sort of plan. It doesn't have to be a super organized, Monday I do this, Tuesday I do this, blah, 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 because chances are maybe you might not get that done. And also most people can't hold themselves to that standard, I certainly can't really. There's always stuff that I put on my checklist and then I don't actually end up doing it. And I just kind of push it over. It's like kicking the ball down from one president to another. You have to have at least some sort of loose schedule. So for me to make sure that I'm getting stuff done every day, I basically say when I wake up and I go to classes and then in the afternoon I will work and I will basically work until 10 to 11 p.m. And then after that, I just make sure that I stop and I take time to play games, read books. So basically I am making sure that I work during the day and then at night I know that I will have time to play games and have fun. So that helps me focus during the day and not think, oh, I'm just gonna push it off. I'm just doing this fun thing right now. Because that kind of leads to more procrastination and you never get stuff done. Another thing that I would say is you need to try to get a bit more information on your classes. One thing that I like kind of like to do is shop around recitations and kind of see which ones might fit into my schedule. And then I'll go to each of them within the first few weeks of classes. And I will see which TA teaching the recitation is kind of the most literate, is the best teacher, maybe has the best grasp on the concept. And I'll usually try to go to that recitation and set that down because having a good TA feeding good recitation knowledge to you is really, really useful, especially in some of these harder computer science classes. Also, it can be really hard to stay awake in lecture. I've definitely fallen asleep in lecture just like this past week. Don't tell anybody that, but it happens. I really try to generally eat food. That's what keeps me awake in my lectures. I'll just have small snacks that I pack and as the lecture is going, I'll just like nibble on things to keep myself awake. Otherwise, especially with these long, more than one hour lectures, especially if you have them back to back, it can be really hard to keep your focus. And also your professor is talking about some abstract stuff a lot of the times, some things that you really need to be hands on to really understand what's happening. And it's hard to keep that focus for maybe the middle half hour of the lecture if you have maybe a one and a half or two hour lecture. Basically, when I get to those kind of points where I'm feeling sleepy, I'll just nibble on some stuff. Other people obviously use caffeine. I personally don't drink caffeine of any sort. I don't drink the energy drinks and stuff, but you know, that's a personal choice. A lot of people will just drink coffee and that'll keep them awake. So I guess it's not a big deal. But if you're like me and you don't like caffeine, then Nibbling on food is good. Also doodling is good. Something that my friends and I have kind of learned through the years with experience is that taking notes might not always be the best idea in class. I know that it sounds counterintuitive, like, are you supposed to be a good student and like not take notes in lecture? But sometimes your professor goes really fast and you simply just cannot write down everything in time. And if you are, you're only thinking about the stuff that they've said before and then you're kind of missing the links between concepts and you're like, when did they jump to this new thing? When did they introduce this new term? What is happening here? 
and you're just lost beyond and you're skipping parts of the lecture. So if you can type, that's pretty great, but a lot of times there are symbols that you can't type in math classes or logic classes. And unless you're really, really good at LaTeX, you're not gonna be able to really keep up typing either. A workaround that I found is that I simply just don't take notes. I will actually try to pay attention in lecture just by listening and keeping myself awake with doodles or sketches or anything else that's kind of more artsy, but you don't really have to actually think about words or anything that you're writing down. So you can just kind of listen and try to pay attention and gather that information. Especially if your professor will post the slides or lecture notes later, when you get this first pass of information, paying attention to it is really important. So just listening to it, looking up, watching as they go through the slide, really trying to absorb some information. And then later you'll go back and review that information and it, it gets ingrained into you a lot better than if you miss chunks of it during the lecture. But obviously if your professor is like, I'm not posting slides, I am not posting my lecture notes, so you have to pay attention right here, right now, and take notes, then you have no choice. I'm sorry, you're just gonna have to tough it out and take notes. That's really cool advice and all, but there are some people in my classes that already seem to know everything the teacher's talking about, even though I'm completely lost. I don't understand how they already know all of the material before it's even been taught to us. Am I just really dumb? Am I underprepared? Am I screwed? If you're starting to get that kind of imposter syndrome feeling where you're like, Oh, I'm not good enough to be in this major. All these people seem to have so much more knowledge than me. One, it's probably just that one kid or a couple kids in class that are actually raising their hands and answering the questions and not the vast majority of the class. The vast majority of them are sitting in silence being like, What the heck, dude? How, how do you know the answers to this? I haven't even heard of this term before. Like, how? I'll tell you how. Chances are they've seen it before. Maybe they are super interested in the content. Or they've just taken classes already that have covered that stuff. And if you've seen the content before and it's your second or third time going around to the same stuff, then yeah, you're going to be able to answer all of the teacher's questions and even kind of know what's going to happen soon too, right? So don't beat yourself up about it. It's just because they probably had prior exposure and you wouldn't know that unless you literally asked them, right? So a lot of these concepts, especially the more abstract ones that show up in discrete math or algorithms courses are just something that you have to get used to. You have to see the terms and all of the ideas over and over and over again and slowly it'll start absorbing into you. In the beginning, it's always going to feel super foreign. That happens to every single person unless they're literally just like a genius. In which case, you can't compete with them anyways, right? So why bother beating yourself up about that? Okay, cool. Uh, so on top of that, what is your biggest advice for freshmen? So my biggest piece of advice for freshmen isn't actually academics related. It is health and mental health related in order to make sure that you do not burn out in the middle of the semester because trust me, for most schools, once midterm season starts, it just never ends. Like not until that last day of finals, you're going to be stressed and there's gonna be deadline after deadline and everything's gonna pile up. So in order to actually stay sane throughout that whole process and not burn out and just, you know, not be able to handle anything anymore, you have to make sure that you build in time to relax and build relationships with people that you can relax with. This is super important because your mental health really does play a huge factor in whether you can perform well in your academics. Trust me, I thought that that wasn't the case and then um, that kind of screwed me over big time. I might do a video about it later, but Basically, take my word for this one, you really want to make sure that you have time to relax, find a group of people you can do homework with, and also do like leisure time with, or they could be separate groups of people, whatever. Do clubs that you're actually interested in, and just, it's gonna be stressful, but I'm sure you can make it work. Trust me, this is for your own good.
Yeah, everybody says that I should join new clubs and meet new people and have fun, but honestly, I'm kind of socially anxious. I don't really do well in like these new settings and I don't really know the campus and it's just kind of uncomfortable. Let me tell you a secret. Pretty much everyone in this major is socially anxious. We're not business majors, guys. We're literally computer science majors. So I'm pretty sure almost any person that you grab out of your classroom is gonna say pretty much the same thing that you just said to me that this is kind of uncomfortable, they don't know how to start conversations, and small talk really isn't their thing. Well, one, you're gonna have to get a little bit better at it because newsflash in the world, you wanna be able to talk to your coworkers, you wanna be able to talk to recruiters or when internships and job searches and stuff come up. So you're gonna have to kind of hone in on these skills, but it really doesn't have to be that hard. I know I'm saying that and you're like, that is. Just remember literally the fact that I just said that pretty much everyone feels the same way. So just know that in your head. And then when you're talking to someone, if you know that they're feeling the same way as you, it makes you less nervous, right? And also 95% of the time, people are only thinking about themselves. So if you make some sort of mistake, they're probably not catching it unless it's like a catastrophic, like, oh my God, my pants fell down and everyone saw me naked or something. Like, unless it's something super memorable like that, if you stutter, if you repeat yourself, it really doesn't matter. People are not going to notice. And in fact, they are probably going to thank you for starting the conversation. So I would just say, just go walk up to them and be like, hey, you know, that lecture was kind of hard. I literally had no idea what the professor was talking about the entire time. And they'd probably be like, oh my God, same. Trust me, I've done that. And I always get that same response. You can do it, you can make friends. It's a new environment. And especially freshmen, they found that everyone is super open to finding friends, talking to new people, getting new experiences. I mean, after all, it's college. This is kind of what we're conditioned to be like, you should be doing, you should be having fun, you should be meeting people. And so that is what everyone is usually really open to do. So you got this. Okay, yeah. And my last question is, I'm already hearing stuff about internships and I'm just a freshman. I literally like just got here a couple weeks ago. I haven't really started or finished any of these classes yet and yet people are somehow already getting internships. I don't understand what that's about. I kind of feel really underprepared. Should I be doing this too? First of all, no pressure to get an internship the summer after freshman year. As you said, you really don't know that much and companies are like, why should I hire this freshman over this junior? Like they only had a year of school by the time they've come into my company. They probably have only learned the very basic minimal things about this field. And yeah, you know, that's, that's true. So what are you gonna say to that? But there are freshman sophomore programs that you can apply to. I'll put them up here. I already talked about them in my things freshmen should know before going to school video that I will link up here. And basically you can apply to these internships. It's really great if you do, because when you have an internship on your resume, it's easier to get other internships further down the line. But it's also that kind of catch 22. You're a freshman, you don't really have any sort of projects and experiences, so why should a person hire you? But that's why those freshman sophomore programs are there to kind of help freshmen jump through that hoop and start getting their career rolling. But definitely no pressure to actually have one successfully at the end of freshman year. I didn't have a freshman internship. In fact, 50% of like the class at CMU don't have an internship after their freshman year and everyone is perfectly fine. People still find great jobs and people still find internships like sophomore, junior year, so it's not a big deal. But you should just apply to these programs anyways because you never know. If you get it, then you get it and that's great. And if you don't, then just don't stress about it. It's fine. There's so many things that you can do in the summer. Actually, you should really enjoy the summer after freshman year because that's probably your last summer that you're not going to be stressing out and thinking about, should I do research? Should I have an internship? 
and if you do then you're like working the entire summer so i would just chill take that from summer and become healthier do whatever you want if you're really thinking about applying to these programs and you're like i just don't really have a lot of experience i don't like should i still apply yes of course you should still apply just go for it that's basically probably my underlying message for this entire video is just whatever you want to do in college just go for it because nobody else is really going to push you to do it except for yourself no one's going to lay these paths down for you you have to walk them and you have to carve out your own path so if you are not going for it then you're just never going to get there you have to put in this work so just go for it take the chance and it doesn't really matter if you do succeed. The companies know that you're a freshman. They're not going to expect you to have the same level of knowledge as a graduating senior or even a junior. And so they're going to reflect that in their programs and just give you projects that they know that you could probably handle. And also their interviews and online assessments are easier than just the most basic array string type stuff. Don't worry too much about it. Prepare a little bit with leak code. They're probably mostly easies and maybe some mediums, but definitely not gonna see like leak code hearts in there. They're basically just, just gonna test you on the stuff that you learned in APCS or computer Science and maybe only a little bit of like data structures and algorithms. So don't worry too much because probably by first semester or second semester, you will have taken your algorithms course and you will be able to be familiar with these concepts and do that. If you're a freshman who is dead set on having some sort of internship after freshman year, which again, you don't need to, but okay, I respect the hustle. If you don't get into these freshman sophomore programs, because let's be honest, there's not really that many spots open, it is still possible to get an internship with a smaller company or maybe a startup, but it is just a lot of work because most companies don't want freshmen, they want juniors, and they want juniors with experience and not a freshman with no experience. So you wanna touch up your resume and basically apply to as many small companies or any companies as possible. You wanna do it on kind of more of a rolling basis. So as soon as you see a company posting that they have some sort of internship open, you wanna to apply to it as soon as possible, be one of the first people and expect just a lot, a lot, a lot of rejections. You should check out my software internships for noobs video because I basically talk about what the actual process is like for getting an internship. And if you're really set on that track, then go get yourself informed. And you should really subscribe and ring the notification bell because I will have so many videos on internships. All right, guys, that was senior me giving advice to freshman me, except I was not that hipster and freshman. Not even I hope you enjoyed that and that it is useful for all you freshies out there. Trust me, it's kind of a hard journey, but it's a rewarding one and I'm here to help you through it. But for now, that's Becoming Her, signing out.